Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Senior Airman James Bueller. Service members should always adapt to new environments and working conditions. Katusa Corporal Ming Kyu Bay finds out what kind of weather conditions soldiers in Korea have to keep in mind. Monsoon season occurs when our winds shift to a southwesterly flow here in Korea. That means the warm, moist air from the south starts moving up into the peninsula, and it conflicts with the cooler, drier air that's located to the north of us. And between those two air masses, you have a monsoonal boundary, or here in Korea we call it the Jungma front. Weather associated with monsoon is two to four days of lasting rain. This can lead to several safety hazards. Flooding is the largest one. Um, other dangerous hazards uh, are flash flooding and also mudslides. During periods of heavy rain, we recommend not to park uh, near hills or mountains because that's where usually flash flooding and mudslides occur. While on post, keep an eye out for signs that tell you not to park. Also, it's important to know where the high ground is in your area before heavy rain. During a flood, do not attempt to cross a stream or a roadway that is flooded. Uh, you don't know how deep the water is. You don't know what the condition of the road is. So either yourself or your vehicle could get swept away. Katusa Corporal, Min Bay, Seoul, Korea. Monsoon season occurs from June to September. Always stay aware and be vigilant. The Warrior Leaders Course, or WLC, helps soldiers become good leaders. Army Sergeant Sam DeLeon shows how one soldier is taking that first step. The Warrior Leaders course on Camp Jackson helps soldiers learn the initial steps they need to become good leaders. For one soldier, the first step is getting set in the right direction. Today was, uh, we're doing land nav. Land navigation, we had to find at least three points uh, in three hours and 15 minutes. It got, it got a little tougher going up the, uh, the mountains and all the terrain. Uh, it got pretty tough, it got tiring out there. Uh, right now I'm getting the, uh, the distance between the points, which points I'm going to go through first, and the route I'm going to take. Reed usually spends most of his day in an office. Yeah, I felt pretty good. I haven't done land nav until basically till today, so my SGLs taught me a lot. They took extra time, so I felt pretty good going in. He's a supply clerk and knows his way around a storeroom. Now he's learning his way around a map. He's a very confident individual, very eager to learn. He's always participating, very knowledgeable. Um, always wanting to learn new information, and he's interactive with the other students. Reed found his three points and finished in the allotted time. He also said he felt pretty good that he passed the land navigation course and he's ready for the next challenge. Army Sergeant Sam DeLeon, Camp Jackson, Korea. Specialist Reed finished WLC in the top 10 of his class. The saying goes, don't judge a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. This soldier tries on a pair of shoes with over a 2,000 mile range. Senior Airman Destiny Chavez explains. These, these uh, I don't know what it's called, the stick. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. United States Forces Korea Command Sergeant Major Anthony Mahoney has served for nearly 30 years and he's still learning. Like I said, I'm a, I've grown, grown up in the infantry. Today, F-16 pilot Captain Van Morrissey from 36 Fighter Squadron gives him a lesson in flight. We integrate a lot with the Army, so I think it's really important for him to see the capabilities of the aircraft and also the limitations that we have with some of our uh, current avionics and uh, really show him what we can bring to the fight and uh, what we need in the future to make that sustainable. And some, bring some unique attributes to the battlefield, which I was never really aware of uh, until actually getting to experience uh, what one of these wonderful aircraft can do in flight. I now am aware of some of the capabilities of our brothers and sisters in the Air Force, giving us close air support uh, from above. Today's experience bridges the gap between land and air, creating a better environment for our future forces. Because we're all part of a joint team around the world and especially here in Korea. And it doesn't matter what uniform you wear, it, the, your, your label there on everybody it starts with U.S. United States. So it doesn't matter if you're a sailor, a marine, or an airman, or a soldier, we're all in the same family. Senior Airman Destiny Chavez, Osan Air Base, Korea. Command Sergeant Major Mahoney is the first Command Sergeant Major to participate in a familiarization flight in 15 years. War heroes are honored in many different ways. Senior Airman Christiana Scott shows how 8th Army honors the Rock's most influential veteran. Fighting is a very, very uh, Rough condition. A Korean war hero remembers his time as a young soldier. We, uh, South Korea, anyway, uh, Americans help. Uh, used to be this country, very poor country, not like this. And now, 60 uh, years later, 
8th Army is honoring this veteran by naming its mobile operational command post after Pek Sung Yup, the ROC's first four star general. There is a uh, tradition in the United States Army uh, to name those things that we're most fond of. We name buildings after heroes, and in many uh, of our best outfits, we name our command posts. The General Beck Sung command post. Senior Airman Christiana Scott, Seoul, Korea. General Park Sun Yup will celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Armistice Agreement this year. Sometimes just talking to someone can make all the difference in the world. Army Sergeant Jared Don learns that help is always available. To some, this looks like an ordinary phone. But in reality, this phone has the power to save lives. Major General Brian Bishop is making the final test call of the new suicide hotline. This line is going to be manned 24-7 and the agency who will be primarily manning this will be our veterans, uh, veterans crisis line, the military crisis line personnel that is also manned 24-7. This service is available to all military, dependents, and civilians. Having a listening ear just a phone call away is an excellent tool for those that need help anytime, day right or night. Right now. <laughs> that completes the 360 process. Army Sergeant Jared Don, Yongsan, Korea. The new suicide hotline is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Almost everyone relies on electricity in their daily lives, so changing habits to conserve energy can be difficult. Specialist Sarah Herring shows us what happens when a few power plants go offline. This summer just got a bit hotter. With some of Korea's power plants going offline, the peninsula will face blackouts during the summer. Three power plants are going to be out of offline. Those blackouts are just going to take sections of the peninsula, specific areas, out of power for a certain time so they don't affect everybody at the same time. During this downtime, the power company will be working with the military so bases won't be affected. What we're trying to prevent is the installation, the uh, army bases to be affected, and that's what we, we're concerned on. Although military bases will not be affected, the installations are still helping out by lowering their energy consumption. They can uh, buy more efficient lighting. Um, they can uh, reduce the amount of the use of the ACs and furnace, and they can uh, change their habit. Specialist Sarah Herring, Seoul, Korea. The power plants will be back up and running in about four months. Safety should be a priority no matter what organization you're a part of. We had a chance to learn a little more about a group of people who stay safe to keep you safe. Annual maintenance and then the other vehicle. Well, for the, the firefighters in operations, their typical day is, you know, we do, we do roll call in the morning where the assistant chiefs and the station chief will, you know, give out the assignments for the day or what duties they, they have to perform, which generally include, you know, checking out the vehicles, you know, performing other safety checks, inspecting their uh, personal protective equipment, and every day at least, you know, one, one training class per, per shift as well. If our guys are doing everything the safe way, they'll get the job done more efficiently, and hopefully they'll, they'll be able to you know, minimize damage from a fire or be able to more quickly rescue somebody, you know, that's maybe in a vehicle accident or, you know, deal with a medical emergency or one of the other, any other type of emergency. If they do it safely, they do it, you know, more efficiently. If they do something unsafe or if they get hurt, and that's taking, you know, valuable resource away, they could go out and actually help the community. You know, we stringently enforce the safety standards for the guys because as, as I said, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's paramount that the guys can get to the scene safely and be able to do their job. Uh, so regardless of what installation you're at, I think, if, if you have any questions about fire safety, you know, contact your local fire department. They'll, they'll find the answers for you and uh, they'll help you out. The Youngsan Fire Department also conducts many training events to ensure they are ready for any emergency that may arise. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, June 27th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. Major General Dave Quantock, Provost Marshal General of the Army and Commanding General of the United States Army Criminal Investigation Command and Army Corrections Command. Welcome to 8th Army. We're excited you're joining the team.